Hey YouTube, what is up? How you guys doing? Welcome back to another bushcraft flint napping, flint napping thingy. I'm gonna show you guys today how I identify uh, different kinds of creek rock for flint napping. I mean, I'm sure you guys saw her on a, what was it, alone? They were using a, oh no, it was the beast. They were using a limestone tools to, uh, to butcher animals. So this is flint, this is sharp. This is like hundreds of times sharper than limestone. If you could do it with limestone, you could do it with something like this. Stop here. And I found a, what looks to be a giant piece of flint here. I'll give it a test and see how it looks. Let's try this edge. Now this one I found in a creek. And I saw this, this smooth black here. When you crack it open, it's very, very grainy. And it's very ridgy, very bumpy. And this is not good for flint napping, but this will make good materials for a, a flint and steel fire starting kit. If you find something like this, you could bust this off. I'll actually show you. Yeah, so there's a ledge right here. I'm just gonna bust that off real quick. Uh, hammer stone from the creek. You're just gonna hold it and hit. See, you could probably see the sparks as I'm hitting it. There we go. So very, very grainy inside, but it has this edge here. And I'll show you at the end of the video how to make sparks with something like this. There we go. So not so good for flint napping, but good for fire starting. Then I have uh, another rock that I found. Now this one has a lot of lines in it. So really the only thing you could do with this is section it off at the lines and hope you could make a tool from it. There might be some good spots in here, but I doubt it. You could see all the lines through that. We will give it a quick test. Always put leather down on your leg when you're testing and that's to protect your leg from getting cut see if I could get a good spot to hit here all right now this piece here actually Looks like it might be able to make something. It's a thick chunk, but there's actually not too much damage in this one. There's a little bit right there and a little bit right there. But I think today we're looking for a knife blade. So it's gonna have to be a little bigger than that. But you can use this if you see those lines in it. You just gotta know where to work around. But if you have something like this, you can't really use that. There might be something in there, in the middle, if you feel like whacking on it all day long. Then I have a piece from the creek that looks medium quality to me. And this is really, really green in here. So I'm going to see if I could get a nice flake off of this. There is a lot of lines going through it. So this piece might not 
be so good. We'll see. So, I'll show you what those lines look like when you bust into them. It might look good at first. You see this crystal-y stuff? That's where it's split off. And then on this side, you see what it does there? Those white lines are crystal inclusions and it makes the rock very weak. So you could still get a point from this, but it's not gonna be very durable. So I'm gonna go on to a higher quality rock. Now this one here might not look so good. It's really rough, but when you bust it open, see those colors? And I think I'm gonna to try to make a knife blade from this. This is my highest quality that I have with me right now. So we'll just see what I can do. So if you're collecting from creeks, you're gonna to wanna to be a little selective, uh, especially if you have to carry it back. Let's see. I'll try this angle here. My jacket is a shock absorber here. Looking for a nice, long, flat blade. This one will do. Came right off here. Now I'll see if I could very quickly snap it into you. something I could use as a knife. I'll move a little bit closer. So I'm gonna be hitting on things called platforms. You keep your finger underneath. See what we could do here. See, now there is lines in this too. Those are weak spots, but you could work around them. Make something to use. Just thin this out as much as I can. This spot here has some shale in it. And you're gonna wanna get rid of that. Flake taken out. I'm just zigzagging back and forth, shaping it, thinning it. I'm gonna hit here next. Oh, yeah. Hit right there.
shaping it, thinning it, doing the best I can to keep it in one piece because Creek Rock is finicky. But if you know what you're doing and you practice enough on this stuff, I'm just using this to grind the edge a little bit so I could smack there. Now these lines, inclusions, go at an angle. You can see one there, one there. So I'm trying to avoid messing with them too much that go through the whole piece. And like I said, that is a weak spot. And I'm trying to thin it, but in thinning it, I might break it. Just grind it so you can see what you're doing and to make those platforms a little stronger so they don't crush. I try to get rid of this bump. Got rid of some of it. Now, if you were using a survival, like in a survival situation, you would use this as your knife. These look cool. These are fun. These are tools. You would just put it on the skin, skin like that, and use something bigger like this to butcher the meat. All right. So I am getting there very quickly. Just being careful around those inclusions. And this way a little bit. So you can see what I'm doing. Took that right out of there. We are getting there. Now, like I said, this is not incredible rock. It has flaws. But I'm going to show you how you could make something from it. At least a knife blade. Just do this as quick as possible. So this piece has a lot of damage in there. What I could try to do is get it from the bottom or from the other side. With rock like this, you can make a fairly pretty knife when you put it on a handle. Like I said, you're going to want to be careful thinning it. Get in there. When it gets thinner, on damaged rock, you're going to want to be careful. Weak spot, weak spot. Every time you hit it, it's weakening that a little bit more. So you're just going to want to be really careful. Try to support the rock with your other hand as much as you can while shaping. This has a cutting edge already. And this is from rock I just pulled right out of a creek. And it's working. Cruddy in there. Really cruddy in there.
I'm gonna hit right here. This is the tricky part. You hit at the base going forward, you're likely to snap it, but we'll try. Thinned it. So the reason for thinning this area is so that you can put it on a handle. Because these knives work a lot better when they're on a handle. Just finish up shaping, sharpen it up, put some notches in. shaping it. And thinning it. Now this is good as is now for a knife blade. If you look at artifacts, there's a lot like this. I mean they're more at a tip, which I'll do right now real quick. that so we'll do one more pass over to sharpen it up and to put notches in it's real fast I'm going to use copper and a leather hand pad copper inside a dowel and just sharpen it up so same thing, I'm gonna just push on those edges in and down. So into the point, push in, down. Down, down. And just sharpen up that whole edge. Make sure nice and even all the way around now you would think that rock wouldn't make extremely pretty points but it does look at that that part I could thin a little bit look at that so now I'm gonna leave this spot a little thick because of that damage in there you can see it right there if you leave it thick, the knife blade will survive and it'll cut just fine. I mean, it'll cut me. Here, look. Can you see that? Oh, I'll do it right here. Cut, cut, cut. Um, and this is not even incredibly sharp yet. Not yet, it will be. Okay. Sharpening up those edges. I mean, I'm sure you guys saw on a, what was it, a loan? They were using a, oh no, it was the beast. They were using a limestone tools to, uh, to butcher animals. So this is flint, this is sharp. This is like hundreds of times sharper than limestone. If you could do it with limestone, you could do it with something like this. Make it sharp enough here, and that'll cut your skins, cut your hides, and it'll butcher the meat like a regular knife. Now what I'm gonna do, uh, for the notches, 
is I'm going to use a uh, indirect just to really quickly put notches in. I'll show you how I do that. I rest the notcher here, the flaker here, and I hit down and it pops a flake out. Put the flaker under my leg, rest it into the point, hit down, hit down, that's two hits. Hit down, hit down. So that's all I did. And now, you have a spot to wrap. Put the handle on here. Let's say you're putting it onto this. Put it on there. You find some kind of glue and cordage, and you have your knife. sharp as can be. Not as thin as I would like it, but that's Creek Rock for you. It's really pretty. It's green and black, splotchy, swirly. And that is how you make a knife blade from something like that. <laughs> All right. So, as always, thank you to my Patreons, my subscribers on YouTube. And I will be doing more of these until I could get back out on the road. Look at that. It's really pretty. I might keep this one for myself. Uh, if you see those lines, again, if you see those lines in the rock, it's not the best. So the less lines, the better. The less lines, the better. Don't forget that. When you're out there looking for stuff, if it looks chalky inside, it's not as good. If it looks glassy inside or smooth, very smooth, it's good. I'll show you right here, like that. Okay, guys, you have a good one. I will see you soon. Enjoy. See you guys.